guys what's up it is Meredith and today I have a cooking video to share with you guys I have three recipes two of which are crock-pot dinners for you guys and then I also have my Aunt Mary's famous and at least I say famous in our family <laughs> sort of way famous uh, marinated flank steak it is absolutely delicious you are definitely going to want to try that one and um, the two crock-pot meals that I made are the carnitas crock-pot tacos so if you like yourself some tacos i mean really who doesn't like tacos they're like one of the best foods on the planet in my personal opinion you know right up there with like bagel sandwiches and i don't know like all desserts i have a sweet tooth anyways i digress so <laughs> The crock pot carnitas, I weigh up to the recipe, so you'll see that all the recipes will be either linked or typed up in the description box below. And the third meal that I, the third, I just held up two fingers. Where is my brain today? The third meal is a crock pot rice crack chicken. So it has bacon, it's got chicken, it's got rice, it has cheese, it has all sorts of yummy deliciousness in it. However, I'm going to say two modifications that I think I would do to this recipe because I feel like it's almost to the point of overdoing it. Okay, so the first thing is I would switch out the milk in this recipe for just chicken stock or chicken broth. Um, I feel like it's somewhere you can cut calories and you won't notice the difference because it already has cream of chicken soup in it. So I would do that. And then the I would make it low sodium chicken broth also. And the other thing I would do is I don't feel like it needs the cheese in the recipe. Um, I think you could just sprinkle some over the top of it in the crock pot and save yourself some calories there too. Um, I do think it'd be great with chopped onion um, and or like frozen peas added in the last half hour um, to up the veggie intake in this meal. And I also think you could cut the bacon in half and still get amazing bacon flavor in the dish while again saving some calories. So again, all of these will be in the description box below. You can certainly make it as the recipe states with the cracked chicken or you can make my modifications. That is totally up to you. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It really does help me out. Don't mind my makeup <laughs> swatches on my hand. I'm filming multiple videos today. And let's get to cooking. This recipe is for my Aunt Mary's marinated flank steak. So I am doing a double batch of this. So I will leave the recipe um, typed up in the description box below because it will be confusing to you guys if I tell you how much I'm using when I'm doubling the recipe. So anyways, we're gonna do some brown sugar and lots of freshly minced garlic. Now a lot of times I use garlic in the jar, but for this recipe I really do think that you want to use the fresh garlic if at all possible. Um, yes, your hands will smell like garlic for days, but this is so delicious, you will not care. Okay, so we've got garlic and brown sugar. We're going to do some black pepper. And now we're going to go ahead and add in soy sauce. And quite a bit. Mary might have gotten this uh, recipe out of a cookbook way back probably when she was about my age and I was probably a small child because I remember having this steak at her house many times when we visited when I was little. So my Aunt Mary always makes it and then my Uncle Peter does the honors with the grill. So now we're adding in some tomato juice. Now, one thing that I will mention is I don't use tomato juice a lot in my cooking, but if you buy the tomato juice in the plastic bottle, I have found that this actually freezes really well. So say you're grilling in, you know, March or April, then in a few months when you want to make this again, you still have the tomato juice and you don't have to worry about getting it from the grocery store next time. And the last thing that we're adding in is some vegetable oil. The recipe just calls for oil, so you could kind of use whatever you have on hand. I don't think I've ever done it with veg uh, with olive oil. I'm pretty sure I usually do it with vegetable oil, but you could certainly substitute if you want. And now we're gonna go ahead and whisk this. 
just to make sure that any clumps of brown sugar are broken up and that everything kind of gets happy together. I'm telling you guys, this is so good, seriously. I don't make it very often, but when I do, oh, yum. Now we're gonna go ahead and add our steak, flank steak into the marinade. So what I have done, and hopefully this is gonna come across on camera, is, but I, is I have taken a knife and I've scored the beef in a crosshatch pattern. So, you know, slice it just a little bit into it. You don't wanna go all the way through the steak, obviously. Um, and this is just gonna help the marinade really get into the meat. And I think that the tomato juice in this does um, help to tender, tenderize it as well. I believe the acidity in the tomato juice uh, helps with that. So I'm just going to arrange my beef in here and trying to make sure that the most, that most of it, if not all of it, is covered. I know my Aunt Mary normally does this in a Ziploc baggie, but I'm trying to be a little more environmentally friendly and not use a single-use plastic. So we'll see how this goes. So I will definitely be spooning some of it over the meat, I think. But it should work out just fine. There we go. And now I'm going to go ahead and grab the lid to my Pyrex baking dish. Now this has to refrigerate and marinate for um, at least like six to eight hours. So this lid does not want to go on. There we go. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick this in the fridge. We're gonna let it marinate all day and then we will grill it up. It is gonna be so good. All right, so now as you can see, the snow is melting from my yard. Let us all rejoice. Okay, so here is what the flank steak looks like after it has been marinating for a while. And my husband kindly preheated the grill for me. So we're gonna go ahead and use some tongs to place these very large <laughs> pieces of flank steak. Forgive the filming as I am currently holding <laughs> my phone and trying to grill. Oh my gosh, that garlic smells amazing. Okay. I'm gonna put this guy on the grill also. And because flank steak is thin, it's really more of a hot grill and cooking it somewhat quickly. So I'm gonna keep an eye on this and we'll check back in a minute. Here is how it's looking, really, really good. I did cut into it just a little bit right there just to make sure that it was cooked enough for our liking. So I'm gonna pull this off and we're gonna cover it with foil and let it rest for a little bit to let the juices in the meat redistribute. Today's recipe is crock pot carnitas. Now I am making a mahusive batch of this because I bought my pork shoulder at Costco in the mega pack. So I'm going to leave the recipe typed up in the description box below. It is not my personal recipe. I got it from someone a long time ago, but we're gonna go ahead and mix up the spice rub for this. First off, we're gonna use some oregano. I am just gonna tell you the ingredients and leave you the recipe because if I try and do the math for this, it's not gonna work. Some salt, a crazy amount of black pepper, way more than you might think, but it ends up being delicious, so just go with it. And some ground cumin. Now, if you wanted a little more spice, you could definitely add like chipotle powder or maybe even some cayenne. So that was, that time I was for a, a child's classroom call, not any food. Okay, so we're just gonna stir this up, make sure that any of the clumps of uh, cumin are well mixed and broken up in here. And that is a lot of spice rub, but we're gonna use all of it. Um, so I absolutely love using this recipe to cook once and eat a whole bunch of times. It is absolutely delicious and it freezes really, really well. So this is about 13 pounds of pork shoulder, also known as pork butt. It can be labeled either way in the grocery store. And we're gonna go ahead and season it up with our mixture. Now I've cut this into large chunks because that's a what the recipe calls for and b it helps it cook down a little bit more normally i do this in the crock pot however um because this is such a massive portion this is obviously not going to all fit in one crock pot i'd be lucky to get this in two large crock pots because there's just so much of it if you're wondering what this is, this is one of those really large roasters, which if you are someone who hosts holidays or loves to cook in large batches, um, I highly, highly recommend getting one of these roasters. 
they are great and this is what i do my thanksgiving turkey in every single year and let me tell you it's like cooking your turkey in a crock pot it comes out so tender and dare i use the m word moist it's absolutely delicious so i highly recommend it i'll link to one on amazon in case you are interested and then next up we're going to use a ton of fresh garlic cloves as well as um, some large chunks of onion and we're going to put those on the top so that as they cook they're just going to release all of their lovely flavor and juices into the meat and everything is going to be so unbelievably tender and delicious and I'm literally going to be able to shred all of this up with a fork at the end of the day so I'm just going to toss all that in making sure I get my garlic pretty evenly distributed and of course the garlic softens up enough that you could totally eat uh, it with your carnitas it's just delightful okay it's delightful you will not regret making this one if you are uh, not vegan <laughs> so I highly recommend this one this is a great recipe I've had it for years and years and years and my whole family will eat it it's got tons of flavor but not tons of spice so all of my kids eat this it's great all right so that's it that's all we have to do for about you know eight hours I'm just gonna set this on a low heat setting Probably about, this one actually has a temperature gauge, so probably about 200 to 250, and just let it go all day, and then we'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like. Oftentimes what I will do when I get a pork shoulder this large, if you're looking for a cook once but eat twice sort of situation, is I will take half of this and make shredded pulled pork for like pulled pork barbecue sandwiches, and that freezes really well, and then I'll make half of it as carnitas taco meat. Yes, I do own two crock pots. I'm kind of weird like that, but I love hosting gatherings and whatnot, and so I will do that sometimes, um, have two crock pots going for like two different types of taco meat, or I've done like baked potatoes in the crock pot. You can wrap them up in tin foil and put them in there and come back later. It works great for a baked potato bar, just random aside there. So anyways, that is everything. All right, see you back soon. I can't explain all the feelings that you're making me feel. Here is what the carnitas looks like now that it has been cooking literally all day. It did take a little longer to cook in this big roaster than I had originally planned. I think simply because there was just so much in here, but it is literally uh, breaking apart with the spoon now. I don't know if you can see that, but it is looking amazing. So now I'm just going to spend some quality time with two forks and shred all of this up. It is now all shredded up and ready for tacos. It smells absolutely amazing, and believe it or not, I save old like cottage cheese containers. I know, total cheapskate move, but it works great. Um, so that I can freeze some of this in batches in our deep freezer downstairs in our basement, and we will be set to go for a long, long time. All right, let us find a chicken. Down at the bottom here. Oh my gosh, I think it's already breaking apart as I'm trying to grab it. Well, this might be a whole lot easier than I was thinking it was. You're supposed to cut up the chicken, but I don't even have to. <laughs> it's literally pulling apart. So I'm just going to break this chicken up <laughs> in this case. Well, this one's coming out. Okay, that's working a little better. <laughs> here, I was hoping for dramatic chicken uh, grabbing here. Make it for a very good video, but it's breaking apart. I don't know, maybe that's even better. So I'm just pulling all the chicken out. I'm going to cut it off to the side here on a plate, and then we're gonna mix that back in with our really good smelling dinner. Oh yeah, definitely completely cooked through. It's cutting so easily and breaking apart. The combination of the chicken and the bacon smells amazing. I am excited for dinner this evening. Chicken is chopped. We're just gonna slide that right back in to the crock pot. 
let this cook for just over four hours. And I think this probably was done a while ago based on the shreddability of the chicken. So I totally stole a bite while the family is still waiting for dinner. Shh, don't tell them. Let's try it. Oh yeah, this one is a winner for sure. All right, so we have some fresh cut up strawberries and some asparagus to go with our dinner. And I'm gonna dish up a little bit of our crack chicken and rice. And that is what the kiddos are having for dinner and us grown-ups too. <laughs> 